Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We have a quadruple integral. Let t be equal to the product of x1, x2, x3, x4. The integrand is equal to 1 over t, len t squared, len t squared plus t plus 1 over t squared minus t plus 1. Each one of these four variables is between 0 and 1. Let's start by investigating the general case in which we have an n-dimensional integral with an integrand that is a function of the product of the variables of integration. The claim is that this n-dimensional integral can be written as this factor minus 1 to the power n minus 1 over the factorial of n minus 1 times a one-dimensional integral. We have here the integrand as a function of one variable, say x1, multiplied by ln x1 to the power n minus 1. This identity is clear for n equals 1. I previously studied the case of n equal 2. We have double integral 0 to 1, 0 to 1, h of alpha beta, d alpha, d beta, equal to minus, because this factor is minus 1 when n is equal to 2, integral eta from 0 to 1, h of eta ln eta. We prove this proposition by induction. Let's assume that for an integer m greater than or equal to 2, we have this identity. We study now the integral with m plus 1 variables. The goal is to show that this integral is equal to this side here with m replaced by m plus 1. I assume here that it is valid to interchange the order of integration. We start with this m plus 1 dimensional integral, fix the variables from x1 to xm minus 1, and let's deal with this integral as a double integral with respect to xm and xm plus 1. Using the result for n equal 2, the double integral with respect to these two variables can be replaced by minus 1 times a single integral. xm, xm plus 1 is now replaced by xm. Then we need to insert this natural logarithm of xm. By doing this step, the number of integrals is reduced from m plus 1 to m. Function h depends on the product. Every variable is from 0 to 1. The value of the integral does not depend on which variable is here. We can have x1 or x2 all the way to xm. In all cases, we get the exact same value. This means that this integral that we have here can be written as 1 over m. Then we have the integral with len x1 plus the integral with len x2 and so on. These integrals, when added, give us the sum of logarithms, which can be written as the logarithm of the product. The induction assumption tells us that if we have an m-dimensional integral, and the integrand depends on the product of the m variables of integration, we can write down this integral as minus 1 to the m minus 1 over m minus 1 factorial. Then we have a single integral. We insert len x1 to the m minus 1. Then we insert the integrand with the product replaced by x1. Minus 1 times minus 1 to the m minus 1 is minus 1 to the m. m times m minus 1 factorial is m factorial. These two logarithms can be combined as len x1 to the power m. And this is the desired result. So if we have an m-dimensional integral in which the integrand depends on the product of the variables of integration, and assuming that we can do the integration in any order of our choice, this integral is proportional to a one-dimensional integral. We have the integrand here as a function of one variable, and we need to multiply by the natural logarithm of the variable of integration raised to the power n minus 1. Our integral of interest is equal to minus 1 to the power 3, that's minus 1, over 3 factorial, which is 6, then we have integral from 0 to 1. If we choose x to be the dummy variable of integration in the one-dimensional integral, the integrand should be 1 over x len x squared times len x squared plus x plus 1 over x squared minus x plus 1. We also need to multiply by len x cubed. This part here becomes len x over x. To evaluate this integral, we rewrite x squared plus x plus 1 as 1 minus x cubed divided by 1 minus x. We rewrite x squared minus x plus 1 as 1 plus x cubed over 1 plus x. This logarithm can be written as len 1 plus x over 1 minus x minus len 1 plus x cubed over 1 minus x cubed. We split this integral into two integrals. Now what is len 1 plus x over 1 minus x? This is len 1 plus x minus len 1 minus x. The series representation of this difference is 2 summation over non-negative integer j of x to the power 2j plus 1 over 2j plus 1. x here is between 0 and 1. If we replace x by x cubed, this function here can be written as 2 summation j from 0 to infinity, x to the 6j plus 3 over 2j plus 1. We write this logarithm as this sum, that logarithm as that sum, and then we integrate term by term. In both cases, we get 2 times summation over non-negative integer j of 1 over 2j plus 1, integral x from 0 to 1 ln x. The difference is that here we have x to the 2j, which is 
x to the 2g plus 1 divided by this x, there we get x to the 6g plus 3 over x, which is x to the 6g plus 2. If we consider the general integral, x from 0 to 1 of x to the e ln x to the b, this can be solved using the substitution x equal to e to the minus w over a plus 1. When x tends to 0 from above, w tends to infinity. When x is 1, w is 0. dx is the exponential times minus dw over a plus 1. The minus sign can be used to have our integral from 0 to infinity. This is dx without the minus sign. x to the a is e to the minus a w over a plus 1. Then x is minus w over a plus 1, all raised to the power b. This integral is minus 1 to the power b over a plus 1 to the power b plus 1 times gamma of b plus 1. Because we have len x, the numerator is equal to minus 1. The denominator here will be 2j plus 1 squared. When we evaluate this integral, the denominator is 6j plus 3 squared. We can take 3 as a common factor. 3 squared is 9. We have now the same sum multiplied by minus 2 plus 2 over 9, which is minus 16 over 9. This sum is zeta of 3 minus 1 eighth of zeta of 3. 7 over 8 times 16 over 9 is 14 over 9. Our original integral is equal to this value here times minus 1 sixth. The final result is 7 over 27 times zeta of 3. 